Welcome back to the channel. Happy holidays. We've got Christmas coming up. We had another interesting day in the markets. A little bit of pre-market activity. I'm talking specifically about AMD. And I want to show you this live trade all captured on film. I did have another bizarre issue with TD Ameritrade. And I'm going to show you that. I captured it on, on the video. So you're going to see sort of the weirdness that's been happening at TOSS. Um, and we're going to continue to talk about that because... I've been getting a lot of comments on the videos talking about a lot of people having slow fills, not being able to get out of orders. I don't know what's going on. My only speculation and from what I'm hearing is that TOS has free commissions, so it just seems to be a volume overload, like they can't handle their capacity. I don't really know. It's just my opinion. So let's dive into this trade. And first of all, I'm going to roll the disclaimer. I'm not certified by anyone. I'm just some random dude that likes to trade stocks and uh, just showing you what I'm doing. I'm not giving any advice. So let's dive into things. So on this trade today on AMD, this is a scalp trade. This is a this took just under two minutes. Um, I ended up booking profit on the P&L of about $650. And this one has given me some thought. I'm trying to come up with a way, and maybe you can help me with this. Drop down in the comments. Let me know if you have any ideas on how I can better manage the trade so that I can stay in it longer. I've been trying to move my stop loss to 2R, and the only way I'm going to stay along for a continued push to the up or the downside is if it's really violent and forceful. But on days when it's just gently drifting down, I typically am getting stopped out because I move my stop loss to 2R, and it just seems to be too tight. So I'm coming up with other configurations and I'll go ahead and kick that to you and we can talk more about that. But I wanna show you this trade specifically. What I like about this today is that we had a little more pre-market activity you can see in here. A little more going on. This is the 15 minute chart and this is the Thinkorswim platform. I like to see some full bars forming. Um, we did get into yesterday talking about how we were getting these little dashes, which means nothing happened. And we were getting that moving close to the open of the market. And that was kind of a weird sign in terms of overall volume. Now, it is a holiday week, and we can expect these things. That's part of the game. But today, we look better. And today, it looked like we kind of put in a little, little level here, and then we started to move higher. So I put my order in above this 15-minute candle, and then below this 15-minute candle, I put on another order, and you'll see that. And it kind of looked like we might go long and then just flipped over and dumped. So I'm going to push play, let you kind of see what's happening here. So it just, we get close to opening right there. There's the opening bell. It flashes and then drops. And we're just waiting. We want to see a nice forceful push. I flip over to where my other order is. And then you're going to see a big, big push, a violent push here. Right about there. Go. Right there. So that big push triggered me in at, at 92.73. Now look, I just want to say real quick, look how pathetic this fill is. I'm going to back this up. Watch my position. I'm trying to, to short 1,200 shares. Look what happens. I get triggered. I'm short 10, 20, 22, 122, 127. It, it took so long to put that order together. But now I'm finally short and I'm fortunate because I got a nice push to the downside. So now we're looking at 92.70 as my price. I've got my stop loss. And one thing I do want to do real quick is back this up. Look how long it took my stop loss to move. So when I push play, so I'm in the trade right now. And this stop loss is not active yet. Watch it move. It'll, it'll shift. Watch it shift into place. Right there. Did you see that shift? That's how long it took for my stop loss to become active. That's horrific because if this price would have reversed violently on me, I wouldn't have had a stop loss in the system. And I would have to call Toss and say, hey, my order got messed up. The stop loss was super delayed. Can you help me? And then they'd have to reimburse me for a loss that I had that was excessive and beyond my stop. So I've got some platform ideas. I'm going to talk to you guys soon on a video about a new trading platform I'm considering and what my plan is moving forward. 
I just don't see Thinkorswim being an adequate platform for trading intraday when you want to carry larger size and have the security of a stop loss. That sounds really weird to say that because a stop loss is such a fundamental thing that just happens. And the stop loss is part of my initial order that I'm entering in the system. So you would think it would be a very quick execution to get the stop loss on the chart. But as you saw, that took a long time to get that in place. So with that being said, let's move on to the rest of the trade. All right, so I hit play on this. So this one moves down nicely. And what I like about this so far is that it's already breached this, these lows of the pre-market. So we've already punctured the pre-market low, which tells me we could get further downside movement. And if we do, we might get a little upside protection from this turning into overhead resistance. That's what I like. So right here, we're down. If it comes back up, it might bounce off this level and continue lower. So we're up about $400. And now what I'm doing is I'm watching for the P&L to get to 2.5R, which is $750. Once it hits that level, I'm gonna fire off my stop loss at 2R. So I'll show you that coming up. And then there's something else weird that's gonna happen with my stop loss. So right here, you can see I've got my stop loss ready to move. Now when I move it, I'm gonna point out another issue with Thinkorswim, another strange issue. So it drifts down further. I'm looking for 750. It's kind of hanging in the mid threes, but I like that we're below that support level of the pre-market. I think we've got some good room down to at least this 92 level. Just watching, 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 and we're gonna see 750, 800, even 900 on the P&L. So right there, I'm gonna fire that off. Now watch what happens here. Let me back that up just so you can see it a little bit. You're gonna see my stop loss is in place, right? I just fired it off. There it is. Price comes back, skips my stop, and look what happens. Got rejected. So what happened there was the stop loss took so long to process in Thinkorswim that the price action moved on the other side of the stop loss and then the stop loss got triggered. And by that time, it's in the wrong order. The stop loss can't be below the price. It has to be above the price for this short order. So it rejected it. So now I'm naked on the trade with no stop loss. And this is just the stuff that happens. I mean, what if I would have punched that and then walked away from my computer? I would have had no idea. So after that happens, now, instead of being able to try to stay in the trade, I gotta make a decision on, should I just flatten it right now? And I ultimately decided that because technically, I would have been stopped out on my strategy or my trade management plan. So I'm just watching this looking to flatten it. And you can see my flatten button up here, which just closes me out. I get a push back above 600 and I hit flatten right there. So that punches me out for almost $650, which is about 2.15R on the day. Really great trade. I'm really happy with it, but to have one two-minute trade that has two thinkorswim stop-loss errors, I just don't know what to do with that. So I'm, I'm really down on thinkorswim right now. I am going to move platforms. I am going to reveal what platform I'm going to move to, and I'm going to do a whole video on it. Thinkorswim is fine if you want to buy stocks and hold them, or if you want to take an entry and swing trade for a week or three days. If you're doing slower type trading, it's probably fine. But again, you might be saying, Jimmy, it's a free platform. Of course it's slow, and I get it. So I'm gonna move, I'm gonna start paying for my data, I'm gonna start paying to execute trades, and I'm gonna explain all this in an upcoming video, but I gotta find a platform that can execute trades quickly and put a stop loss in place within a reasonable amount of time, especially when it's a bracket order, when it's attached to the order. So I wanna flip over, let's look in here. This is the actual live chart for today. I just wanted to show you, uh, here's my trade, my P&L right here, that's 641. I just wanna show you what happened. Ultimately, we got that push down. It was gorgeous, great push down, but then we got this big reversal. So the thing I'm struggling with that I wanna to talk to everyone about is, how could I better manage this? I would like to brainstorm on this and see 
you know, I move my stop loss to 2R and then wait for continuation and then play it bar by bar. But it seems to be stopping me quite a bit. So some thoughts that have come into com the comment section have been, what if you took half off at 2.5R and then move your stop loss to break even? And I thought, you know what, that could be interesting because my break even would have been 70, it would have been 70 right there. So that technically would have worked. Um, if I tried to go to a half an R, you know, that would have gotten, yeah, I would have gotten, probably gotten stopped out at a half an R as well. So I don't know, maybe I do some back testing at half off at 2.5 R and then move my stop to break even and wait to see what happens. If it completely reverses on me, that's gonna be a much smaller win day than I'm used to. At 2.5 R, I'd be getting one and a quarter R. So it'd be um, three, be about $450, which is still fine. I'm, any profit is good, um, but it would give me the chance to let these trades move further. And that might be something I do because if I back test a bit, you know, and I figure out where my one R is, there might be a chance that a very low percentage of them get stopped out. And if that's the case, that's fantastic because then I can just let it move and get beyond 5R, which my rules say anything beyond 5R, you can take off at your own, at your own discretion. Follow it bar by bar till we get to 5R and then cut the trade. So I wanna hear your thoughts on that. Drop down the comment section. Let me know what you think of that. Um, it's an interesting thought. And one other thing I wanted to point out was in the video I mentioned that I was happy we breached these lows. Let me draw a line right here. Let me go right to these lows and let's roughly just draw this line. And I wanna show you something interesting. Look what happened. It was actually protected. I just noticed this. We got the pre-market lows. We got the dump with the pierce. I'll stop saying dump. We got the drop with the pierce. And then it came back and look what happened. It touched the pre-market lows and got rejected. So that begs another question. Maybe I can move a stop loss to that point because it's 73. That's 73. So one R from here would basically be like um, 75 to 50, would be like 50-ish. Let's see, if I went from 75 down to 50, uh, maybe 52. No, that wouldn't have got me one R. I'd have gotten so that would have stopped me out at one R. Yeah, I gotta figure through this. I gotta think through some scenarios. Um, but if you have thoughts on this or you're managing your trades in such a way that you're able to not be so tight on them and you're having decent luck staying in a trade, let me know. Um, I'd love to hear about it. But um, great green day. Christmas is on its way. I am gonna trade tomorrow, so expect another video from me. Um, I don't take days off even near holidays because I've done that before and I've seen some monster trades take place. So I will still be risking one hour tomorrow to take a trade and see what happens, but we'll, we'll kind of go from there. Then we'll have, we'll have Friday off and then I'll be back on Monday. And I'm gonna have a lot of information for you starting next week about trading platforms, about Thinkorswim, about the future for 2021 and sort of where the channel is going. But I appreciate all the support Last night we picked up 22 new subscribers on the YouTube channel and I'm super pumped. If you're new to the channel right now and you enjoyed this content, hit that subscribe button and join us. Hit the like button to help the channel, help the video get out to more people. And come on over to the YouTube banner and click the, the Facebook link and that'll take you to our private Facebook group where I'll approve you and you can join just under 200 of us who like to just talk stocks, bounce ideas off each other. We have experience levels from novice, very newbie beginners to very veteran senior traders that are consistently profitable. So come on over there, join us, and we'll see you tomorrow.